This woman is a phenomenal artist, singer, and songwriter and was named Top 10 Emirati Women in Music by Time Out, Top 5 Women in Music by the National News, a EMA Emirati Musicians Association founding member in Abu Dhabi. She just got back from Los Angeles where she spent months performing on sold out LA stages in Hollywood. She is currently working on her next album. Please welcome the one and only Fafa, everybody. <laughs> Hey. Hi. Hi. Did I do all right? I was I was like, that's me. That's so cool. <laughs> I was like top ten, top five. I was five. like, what? That's crazy. So, <laughs> so my how, room. <laughs> how was how was LA? Oh my god. Compared uh, to your experiences here as an as an artist. So it's interesting because I've been I've been traveling since I was like eighteen. I spent well, I'm showing my age now, I'm twenty nine. And um I've been to Chicago, I've been to New York, come back here, doing my music. But LA was something very, very different to anything I've ever experienced as a musician, as an artist. And what was so different was the welcoming factor and the ability to be able to express without shame nor judgment. And also there was no stereotype put in place of your Emirati, you should be doing this. You should be doing that people just allowed me to speak for myself and not speak for me. And I found that very beautiful and it, it, it didn't get me emotional there. And I didn't understand until I came back, really, that I was like, why is this so welcoming over there? And my creativity was flourishing. I, you know, I told you the album was starting to come together, the EP, all these things are starting to like, like come together and I come back. And then I was met with, but if you want to represent the UAE, you have to do it in the way that just one or two people feel need to be the representation. And I come back and go, why are you, why are you telling me how to represent myself and how to be authentic yeah. and how to be an Emirati woman when you yourself are not an Emirati woman? So <laughs> forgive me and pardon me for expressing myself in the way that I do and talking about the subjects that I talk about because I believe that my people are complex and thinking and emotion and to and to tell me to just sing about how much I love the country is a disrespect to the people because that tells you that we are unable we're incapable of of thinking and, and of expressing emotions ourselves and if you want to hear how much I love my country and my heritage it's in my voice it's in my sound it's in my music I don't say it outright but it's there mm -hmm. and it exists mm -hmm. Just let it breathe and let it exist. <laughs> so you you kind of answered a little bit of this first question I wanted to ask you. Uh, as a woman in music in the Middle East, how difficult can it be to fully express yourself in artistic ways? Right, and I think I think a lot of it comes from assumption. I don't think it's a total. Uh, it comes from malice or anything. I think it comes from assumption and from fear, almost of of what should be done and what can be done instead of just allowing it to be, you know? And so the challenges that I would have here, I, I hid the fact that I was in Malati for years. It wasn't until it came out in an article with my last name printed right on it too. And I was like, huh, oh, I'm gonna get a call from the family. <laughs> like, I gotta explain this to my baba. I'm like, oh my God, when I got tattoos, I sent it to him first, just in case, just out of respect, you know? And the challenges are, there's assumption, there's a lot of assumption. Mm -hmm. And and I think instead of assuming, just, yeah, it's just what I said, let it breathe, you know? Yeah. No. Okay, my, my, my next question for you is, uh, what would you like to see differently in regards to the culture of this new generation of, of young local and expat entertainers that truly believe in the healing of music? Right, and you know, I started out feeling very, very alone in this music journey. I mean, I, I've been singing since I was like six, I've taken singing lessons since I was six. My mom would drive me back and forth to Dubai. It was the only place that we could do anything. I was in Annie, I was in the Sound of Music, I was in the choir at Emirates Palace. I did so many things in my youth because I put myself there. Nobody was giving it. So it was, it was difficult because you had to fight for things that were regular in different countries. 
And as an Emirati as well, he'd be like, but you're Emirati. It was always that, but you're Emirati. And I never understood, okay, I'm Emirati, but you can't finish that sentence. You know, and I'm like, it, it, and, and that comes to me hiding the whole thing because I didn't want that conception of there was either shame that you're a Marathi and you're doing this or you're only getting this because you're a Marathi. Mm. And I don't want to usher in the new generation thinking that they have this sense of entitlement or this walk, this limit, thank you, this limit in front of them because of where they come from. Mm. And, it, and that hinders creativity so much because you get in your head and that can I say this? Can I do this? Can, can I be who I am and is it wrong? to be authentic. And now you have artists like Minova, for example, and Alia, both half Emiratis as well, both 10 years younger than me, singing. And they're out there and they're doing their thing. And I'm so happy to see that that's finally happening, that we are ushering in this new generation and people are not tying it to their nationality. Yeah. They are just, this is my art. This is who I am. Yes, I come from here. But that's just a part of it. Is it a double standard between Emirati men performers 100%, and women? A hundred percent. Okay. And I've seen it, and and um and this is not to discredit any of my my Emirati uh, men performers, and, and you know, around the world, men female is a thing as well, you know. But here, I I do see it where I'm like, okay, I have to work ten times as hard. I write my own music. I have a master's degree from Berkeley. I have bachelor's from another thing. Worked in the government. Did all these things. And yet you still don't want to listen because my experience is not as valid as an Emirati man who picked up the microphone two years ago, you know, and is singing covers and oh, mashallah, 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 he's singing in the kandura, mashallah, mashallah. But that, so, that sense of tokenism hurts us because then the rest of the world looks at us and go, copycats, where's the creativity? What is the, oh yeah, okay, yeah, he sings great. But exactly, and so, I, when I was in LA, I went to an open mic. It was crazy. They're like, where's everybody from? And then you got New Hampshire, South Carolina, Abu Dhabi. Oh, <laughs> I go, what? Abu Dhabi? Get on stage right now. We have never, ever seen anybody from Abu Dhabi, let alone an Emirati, let alone a woman that's from the Emirates, sing on the stage. Get on stage right now and sing your stuff. What'd you sing? I sang a song that I wrote the week before. <laughs> And I was like, I was still, you know, and, and it's a song is called She Cries Murder. And it's about the loss of self and acceptance that it was taken away. But within that, there's the rebirth of that self because of the recognition that it is lost. So you can find it again. And so I sang the song and everyone's like, that's the talent you guys have out there? We had no idea. I'm in the Mecca of music and nobody knew. And I was like, I cannot be the first person to be out here, that is ridiculous. Do you think people are afraid to leave the region to go to other parts of the world to get that experience? I think there has been, especially in Dubai, and again, this is not to, to throw shade at any artist, but it's the structure that has been put in here, mm -hmm. entitlement. And there is this sense of, I made it, so be it. This is, you know, and there's no connection there's no further connection. It's just people are because people are doing cover gigs. Yeah. People are people are working musicians, they're professional musicians. So then when they go out and do their own thing, they just assume, you know, I don't have to engage because no one's been engaging with me this whole time I've been on stage, where my experience has been completely different. Where I've put myself on stage and I've been with the audience and I've been doing all these things, not doing the cover route. Um, and so when I met with musicians here, we're going, and I've had it said to me before, why did you get that and I didn't? When Sony called for the Valorant project, why did they call you and they didn't call me? I have way more many followers than you. I have all these things and I do, do, do not. I'm like, you do. But I think they recognize artistry. And, yeah. and it's just like, sorry to say, but if you cannot work on your artistry, how do you expect anybody to hire you? Right. You know, and that, and that I think they limit themselves within that of that entitlement that I should just have it because I want it instead of really expressing their artistry and letting that go instead of asking why, how, you know? Well, for, for, from my experience, before Quincy, uh, God rest his soul, before Quincy hired me in 2018 and I first came to Dubai, 
I toured. I've been touring since 2009. I was doing sharing stages with Miley Cyrus and the Justin Bieber's and did a halftime show. I did all of these things, right? Mm -hmm. But then came to Dubai. Ain't nobody know who Dante was. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah. I I felt like coming here, I had to start over. Mm. And having my resume with all these people, right. I still came in this room and people sat at these tables and they was just like, who's this guy yeah, like, from Philly? And I said, hey, Dante Kennedy from Philly, music director from you know, every night. <laughs> 800 shows in in this room i'm yeah. saying the same yeah. thing there's um yeah and to that point there's also this thing with pr and marketing that is uh i don't know what they're doing but i've seen things in the past before where i'm like i've done a b c d e f g right and i'm thinking like in my head i'm like oh my god okay i'm like working i'm doing all these things and all of a sudden i see uh something from vogue because someone sang a cover and that, to me, as an artist who's like working on their art and doing their thing, and to see like, okay, we're gonna put the tokenism on here just to show people that we're doing something hurts mm. the artists. Yeah. And it hurts the artist who's in that article too, because now you're telling them, yeah, you're good enough. Yeah, and when they have, when, and you said it, whether you have no experience, you can't do a two hour set. You're wondering why you can't do a two hour set is because they, they think it's given. They think it's already a given thing and they don't have to work that hard for it. And so when, every, when an article is posted about any little thing that like, it's a, it, minimal things, you know, that like someone, someone sang something and it was, you know, average at best, you know, but it's being praised. Yeah. It hurts the artistic community. Is that because they, they know more of the outskirts of music versus the original version because at some point those the music in america was original before it got right. on the radio you know what I mean? yeah i mean if you see like new york in the 80s that was all covers that mm -hmm. was in the 80s it was all covers it took the new yorkers to go hey no venues listen we're gonna be playing grungy stuff in here we're playing jazz over here got some hip-hop over here and we're gonna be doing these things and this is what we're trying to do in abu dhabi especially i'm already speaking with opn from uh spectrum entertainment that i'm like hey lamal i came back from from LA and I cannot get rid of this feeling and I never want to um, and I don't want to have to leave like permanently I don't want to have to leave just to be creative because so, there ha there is people who 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 have moved here for the dreams and hopes to make it in the Middle East exactly and don't last I think a year. with the infrastructure still not being put in place like for example where okay so if LPN handles all these venues in Abu Dhabi and, and Dubai you're a DJ and you have a good rapport with all these venues and all these things. Let's go to the venues and go, hey, I'm gonna try something out. Just hear me out, you know? We might not get paid for this one, we might not get paid for the next one, but wait until those seats fill up, give me 20% of your bar. Because the artists that you bring, people will start coming just to hear live music. I've been going out to um, cafes and, and to just like on the street, anybody that I meet out in downtown in Abu Dhabi, anywhere I go, I would literally go even to the cashier. Hey, do you like live music? And they would be like, like, no, 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 like original live music. And they're like, yeah, I like, I love this. Stuff, but I can't go anywhere. But I'm like, would you, if it existed? Yeah, I would love to. Give something, get something else to do. Get the love of the music. The, the audience needs to be part of the community, and that is also another thing that's missing. With that, with the artists here, they think, okay, I'm gonna get paid for this gig, I'm gonna do this gig, and they don't take the audience into factor. The music lovers mm -hmm. bring so much to the community. Without them, we cannot do what we do, you know? So they really need to be in that consideration, in that budget, whatever it needs to be within whatever proposal, whatever pitch, the people who are there for the love of it, yeah, they will keep coming, they will drive two hours, you know? Yeah. But we just need to reach them. Everybody, please put your hands together. Thank you.